Join the NWA and SICW as they bring you the Match of the Year, sponsored by the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. The NWA world title is on the line as champion Trevor Murdoch, who won the title in August of this year in St. Louis, returns to St. Louis to defend that title against the SICW Classic champion, the international bounty hunter, Attila Khan. Both champions can fight. Both champions can brawl. Murdoch has everything to lose, and Khan has everything to gain. Both men were taught by the late, great Harley Race. Who paid the most attention in class? Will it be Murdoch or Khan? Join the NWA and the SICW Wednesday, December 1st at the Holiday Inn, 270 and Watson Road in St. Louis, Missouri, as the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame brings you this great wrestling card, also featuring a ladies match and other big matches. Also, meet NWA and WWE legends Jerry Briscoe and Cowboy Bob Orton, along with former SICW champion Ron Powers. They will take part in the Hall of Fame ceremony as Sam Muchnick, Larry Matisik, and Mickey Garagiola are inducted to the Hall of Fame. Go to SICW.org for ticket information. Tonight we have some great wrestling for you on this week's episode of SICW All-Star Wrestling. Let's take a look at that now. Hello SICW fans, I'm Drew Ebenhaus here with Herb Simmons for another barn burner episode of All Star Wrestling. We're going to be taking a look at a newcomer to SICW, Franco Varga in action. The 450 pound monster Kowalski will be in action. We're going to hear from Attila Khan or more likely we're going to hear from Travis Cook just days ahead of their NWA Heavyweight Championship Challenge against Trevor Murdoch. And in today's TV main event, it will be Richard Shaw and Rough Cut Rick Ruby teaming up against Bobby D and Danny Dollar. What a match. Good matches. Good match. We're going to hear from Travis, which is not so good, but, we, you know, we're heading in. We're just days away from the huge December 1st show. Going to be a barn burner, as they say. Uh, Downey Brook, as our late great friend Larry Matisek used to call it. Well, we're going to talk about that more throughout this episode. But for now, let's head up to the ring for our first matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, the opening contest on today's All-Star Wrestling features from San Juan, Puerto Rico, weighing 275 pounds, Franco Varga. His opponent is from Springfield, weighing 189 pounds, Billy McNeil. There it is, referee Nick Ridenauer calls for the bell. It is Billy McNeil taking on newcomer Franco Varga. Billy McNeil giving up nearly 100 pounds. As you can see, Franco Varga clearly the stronger man. Well, you can count Billy McNeil out. Like I said, he's been around for a long, long time, and this guy can fly, he can wrestle, he can brawl. But, you know, this newcomer, uh, Franco Varga, I don't know a whole bunch about him other than he got an impressive uh, resume. Look at this. Uh, look at, yeah, oh. Billy. Broke that waist lock right wow. into a side headlock, which Jump. Billy reverses. Tremendous stuff here. If you're not familiar with Billy McNeil, oh, Franco just picking him up and tossing him. But if you're not familiar with Billy McNeil, he's so unorthodox and kind of quirky. You're not used to his style. His timing is weird, you know. It's... Look at that, but he will definitely need to use his quickness uh, to his advantage to stay one step ahead of Franco Varga. Handful of hair from Franco. Oh, just picks it Oh, huge. Almost like a blue thunder bomb from Franco Varga. That's the strength of this 275 pounder on display. Well, what I was going to say, uh, Franco Varga uh, doing a lot of work in uh, Puerto Rico and over in the United Kingdom, uh, making a name for himself. Uh, Jerry Briscoe uh, actually uh, has really been keeping an eye on this young man. I talked to Jerry about him, and he said keep an eye on him because he's an up-and-coming guy. I don't know if his tactics he's using here is going to get him anywhere. Well, you know, we saw him make his SICW debut against Gil Rogers, and there were handshakes and respect here. This Franco Varga seems like he's a little bit cockier. He seems annoyed with Billy McNeil, so I... 
Oh, big boot to the face. Billy up to the second rope. See what he's got in mind here. He catches. He, oh, oh and he was going for a stunner, I think. Look at. Oh, that's spinning like a Urangi from Franco Varga. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Quick win. Man. Franco Varga, very, very impressive. Look wow. at him. What a specimen. Look at him. Showing off a little cockier than we were used to when we first met him. Kind but of a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde attitude. Absolutely. But I tell you what, the SICW locker room has been put on notice. Franco Varga making a statement here on All Star Wrestling, victorious against Billy McNeil. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with the one and only Kowalski. Kowalski, last time we saw you here in SICW, you picked up a rather questionable victory over Danny Dollar. There may have been use of a low blow there, but regardless of that, you were victorious against a very impressive newcomer here. You could call it speculation, whatever you want. There was no controversy to that win. I won fair and square, like I always do. You you idiots don't know anything. Stay out of my business. You know I won to the lap dog of Jerry Lawler. I put him down, and it was too easy. I'm not a ooh, I swear. So, you know what? We're going to move past that right now. We're going to move past that. You people don't have a voice. So tonight, we're going to put a little something in action. Here I have, per my official weight, $446 stored in this envelope for any man that signs the contract and could body slam me. I haven't been slammed in over five years. $446 to anyone that could take me off my feet and put me on my back. Anybody can sign the documents and come into the ring and try. I don't care if you're big, small, old, young. I'll take anybody. All you got to do is make sure that you put your name on the dotted line. I'm ready for anybody because we all know nobody in the back is big enough to do it. So why don't we go ahead and bring out my first victims? Well, you said it. You wanted some competitors, and we've got some for you. So let us head up to ringside for a body slam challenge and then an official match. All right, folks. This is your first challenger for Kowalski's body slam challenge from Carbondale, Illinois at 225 pounds. This is David Lee Walker. Here we go. Look at David Lee. He's giving up. Over 200 pounds here. Oh. Nope. And you can tell David Lee's a strong son of a gun. He's somebody who's obviously lifts some weights. He's got a pretty strong upper body. Oh, yeah, without but, a doubt. And boy, he's moving in. But that is one mountain of a man right there in I mean, Kowalski. What do you do with him if he doesn't want to go anywhere? He's not going anywhere. Uh-oh, but look at who just walked into the uh, squared circle. All right. Peyton this is Ayers. Your next challenger, this is a man from Cape Girardeau at about 300 pounds. This is Peyton Ayers. Look at this. Similar height as Kowalski. Now, this is a big son of a gun. Let's see what he can do. Well, I think Kowalski playing a little mind game there, telling referee Danny Thomas, check him. Whoa, he gets one leg up. Whoa, wait uh, a minute. Can he get him? Oh, you look! Oh no! You can see the lower back, and you can see the legs of Peyton just shaking when he was trying to lift up Kowalski. He's like, "Let me get one more shot." The fans want to see it one more time. Oh, here we go! Do it! Oh, Yo. oh, he's tipping! He's got him! He's getting him up! He's halfway there. There's that one. That right leg hasn't left the ground. Oh man! Very, wow. very impressive attempt, but you can see the look of pain on David's face. He might have just blown his back out. Pardon, Peyton. Peyton Ayers, I mean, he's a big man himself, but look at, there you go, 446 pounds of Kowalski. Yeah, at least for now, it looks like he's going to be keeping his money. But this is also a handicap match. We saw it's David Lee Walker and Peyton Ayers taking on the man from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 446 pounds. 
He is Kowalski. And this is a handicap match. This might be a smart tactic by Kowalski. Have guys try to body slam him before the match. Both of these guys might have just blown their backs out. They might have hurt their arms, tore a muscle. Well, they tie up collar and elbow. Look at this. Peyton Ayers, he is, I think, an inch, maybe two taller than Kowalski, so he's losing, using his leverage to uh, move the bigger man around, at least the heavier man. Oh, but look cool. at that, a side headlock by Kowalski. Yeah. Oh, and he knows how to manipulate these rules. He uses those suspenders to wrap right around the neck. Oh, and look at that, just an open palm thrust to the throat of Peyton Ayers. You know, this Peyton Ayers, this is somebody we've seen a handful of times here in the past on All-Star Wrestling. Fans have asked about him, and I know we'd like to know more about him. He's a pretty impressive guy. Yes, he is, and he's got the size, and, man, I was hoping he could have got Kowalski up with that body uh, slam challenge. Oh, clubbing blows to the back of Peyton Ayers. Look at that. I don't know why he's got that hand taped up for. If he's got something hidden in there, if he's just got extra tape, or what, but this open thrust to the throat, that used to be illegal in pro wrestling, of course. That's like a karate kind of a move. And now he's just putting the boots to oh, Peyton Ayers. Look at that. Look at that. All that weight right onto the side of the face of Peyton. Oh. Ugh. And now just puts the uh, posterior part well, of his uh, body. Not only will that smother a human being, but that's embarrassing, too. Rubbing it in. Oh, look at it. Got a handful of hair. Come on, Rappy. Peyton Ayers fighting back. Blows to the bread basket of Kowalski. Peyton hits the rope. Oh, runs into a brick wall. Now, what's he doing now? Another big clobber to the back of the neck and the upper shoulders of Peyton Ayers. Now that big elbow. And that might be, like we've said, the already injured uh, from that body slam challenge. Nope, nope. Kowalski knows he's not gonna get the pin that way. That was a cocky challenge. He put his foot on Peyton's chest and he stared right at David Lee Walker, almost taunting him. Whip Sayers into the corner. David Lee using that as an opportunity. Uh-oh. Oh, he tried to get his man out of there, but not in time. Bulldog. Huge splash and bulldog from Kowalski. David Lee Walker on the second rope. Big clothesline to the 446-pound monster. Maybe make it two. Kowalski staggering. Will he fall? It is a handicap match. Both men need to use whatever they have at their disposal to try to take it to the monster. Uh oh, look at oh, this. Is this a double clothesline they have in mind? Can they do oh, it? Oh, they're trying. Wait a minute. Uh oh. Oh, oh my God. It's Kowalski reversing the double suplex attempt, nailing, oh. suplexing both men at the same time. That's very impressive. Wow. David Lee Walker and Peyton Ayers together is about 530 pounds. And now Kowalski just blatantly, and there's that thrust again right to the upper chest, uh, right below the throat. I don't know if he's picked up a new move somewhere, if he's been studying some old tapes, but. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh just holding him. him up there. Now oh, drops him big, down. Big, big boss man type slam to David Lee Walker from Kowalski. He just held him up before dropping him down. Showing that massive strength well, he had, holding him up in midair. Uh, and now what's he doing? Rolling him Kowalski, over that corner. It's like a caveman dragging his carcass back to the cave, stepping over David Lee. Huge Kowalski bomb from the second rope. Can that do it? Yes, it can. That's the three. You know... He did recently suffer a loss to Jerry the King Lawler. I think he's used that to light a new fire, to re-motivate himself. Oh, it here he comes over your Kowalski. way again. I'm glad it's you and not me. Victorious in his body slam challenge and in his match. He's coming to the podium. Hold on, let me get a word with Kowalski. Well, folks, 
We're here with Kowalski. He was just victorious in a body slam challenge and in a handicap match. We see it is Danny Dollar coming out to ringside. He's the man, he almost body slammed Kowalski at our recent house show. I think he's here to challenge you. I think he's challenging you right now, Kowalski. It doesn't matter if he challenges me or not. It's by contract only. You're not signed. Not happening. Well, I guess technically he was correct. Danny Dollar has not signed a contract for a body slam challenge. But as we know, these two men have history, and I think Kowalski might be a little afraid that Danny Dollar would answer this body slam challenge. Something tells me this is not over yet, fans. We'll see more in the future with Danny Dollar and Kowalski. Wrestling fans, I am here with the SICW champion, Attila Khan, and his manager, Mr. Travis Cook. Gentlemen, we are days away from Wednesday, December the 1st, as you attempt to tra uh, challenge Trevor Murdoch and become the brand new NWA heavyweight champion. Travis, I know this is something you've dreamed up your entire managerial career. We're days away. What are your final thoughts to tra uh, Trevor Murdoch? You know, this is obviously the biggest match of Attila Khan's career, and it's obviously the biggest match of my career. And you would think that leading into the biggest match of your life, that you'd be nervous. You'd have some butterflies in your stomach. But you know something? I couldn't be more calm than I am right now. Attila Khan couldn't be more calm than he is right now because everything is working in our favor at this point. Trevor Murdoch, your honeymoon period is over. You're now finding out what it means to be the world heavyweight champion. You're finding out what it means to walk around with a target on your back. Mike Knox found you a few weeks ago, and he got you in a steel cage, and he beat you senseless. And you're not 100% now, are you, Trevor Murdoch? You're not even 70% now, are you, Trevor Murdoch? And you are going in there less than 100% to meet until a con December the 1st in St. Louis, the one city on planet Earth where the NWA world title has changed hands more than any other city. Murdoch, we have you right exactly where we want you. I am not all that sure that you'll even show up. And if you don't show up, it's true. You'll save yourself a beating. You'll save yourself the rest 40 or 50 years of your life of physical discomfort. But you will, make no mistake, you will lose the heavyweight championship of the world if you don't show up because that would be a forfeit. And I don't care if Attila Khan wins the world title on a forfeit or I don't care if he wins the world title by pulling both your arms out of your body. Yeah. One way or the other, Woo. December the 1st, the NWA world title is coming home, and I don't mean coming home to St. Louis. I mean coming home to Attila Khan yeah. and coming home to the Travis Cook organization where it has always belonged, and the next time you see me, I am going to be disgustingly wealthy. Ladies and gentlemen, this Wednesday, December the 1st, not only will this man wear the SICW title, he might wear the NWA heavy white title as well. He's going to be the world champion. We'll send this belt back to you. You can have a tournament for it or something. But Attila Khan is going to be your heavyweight champion of the world. Herb, there's no more time. It is three days away. Wednesday, December the 1st. We have a chance, I don't mean to brag here, but this is something very special. We might not uh, go with the people who are gonna wear this belt, but just the opportunity of having the NWA title under the SICW banner, it's something like we've never experienced. I know you're excited. Attila Khan, Trevor Murdoch, do you have a prediction? Well, there's no prediction, but... I know as a promoter, you can't really... Not a prediction, sides. but you're right. Uh, it, it, it's exciting. Uh, it was exciting uh, negotiating with uh, Billy uh, Corrigan of the uh, NWA, the CEO, president. Yep. You know, when you talk about the National Wrestling Alliance, you're talking about something we all grew up on. This was the most prestigious organization uh, uh, around the world 
They defended this title all over, uh, a lot in Japan, uh, you know, everywhere. And all the greats held that title. And for SICW, we are going to brag a little bit about it because it's something that uh, it, it's, it's come to fruition. Yeah. I appreciate Mr. Corrigan giving us that opportunity. But, man, if – and, again, you don't have to like Travis Cook or a telecon, but if it comes home to SICW, to the St. Louis region, that's a, that's a plus for all of us. It's a plus, but it's a giant headache for you. Imagine what Travis Cook has done in the past, just having our belt. Imagine if somehow Travis Cook controls the National Wrestling Alliance heavyweight title. He'll it, be unstoppable. It's scary. It is scary, but that's not all. We talked about – a huge women's match. It is going to be a legend of ladies wrestling. Malia Hosaka taking on someone who's really making a lot of waves and picking up steam in the ladies division. And that is Miranda Gordy, daughter of Terry Bam Bam Gordy of the fabulous Freebirds. I've heard some people say and that's what they're looking forward to the most. Oh, yeah, Crazy. exactly. Well, we she's, she's become known around the country herself. Uh, you know, we had her with us at the uh, Missouri Athletic Club. Yep. She did a great showing there. So I'm really looking forward to that match. Also, Miranda Gordy is a name you better better stay focused on. Absolutely right. Also, Niles Plonquet taking on superstar Steve Fender. Talk about two championship quality athletes. Oh, yeah. I now, mean, that, that's a main event in itself. Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, you're going to see the likes of uh, the Central States title mm -hmm. uh, will be on the uh, 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 line there that night. You read my mind. That's something we can also announce. The night train, Gary Jackson, will be making a defense of his brand-new SICW Central States title, plus a couple more matches. Fans, if that won't get you to buy a ticket, I don't know what will. Uh, this Wednesday, the induction. December the 1st, yes. Same much, Nick. Larry Matasek, Mickey Gary Giola. Uh, wrestling legends, yes. Gerald Briscoe will be there. Uh, Cowboy Bob Orton Jr., Ron Powers. And, I mean, it's, it's just going to be a great Wednesday night, December the 1st at the Holiday Inn, 270 in Watson Road. You bet. We'll be there. Fans, we hope to see you there, too, this Wednesday. Now let's head up to ringside for our TV main event. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our TV main event is a tag team match set for one fall. Introducing first, at a combined weight of 663 pounds, first from Effingham, Illinois, Richard Shaw. Yeah! His tag team partner is from Detroit, Michigan, Rough Cut. Rick Ruby. And their opponents at a combined weight of 514 pounds. First from Belleville, Illinois, Bobby D. His tag team partner from Memphis, Tennessee, Danny Dollar. Referee Nick Ridenauer calls for the bell. This will be an interesting tag team match. This is the first ever teaming of Bobby D and Danny Dollar taking on Rick Ruby and Richard Shaw. Look at that. Nice collar and elbow tie up. Oh, Richard Shaw with the arm wrench. Look at that look on his face. He likes inflicting pain. Well, look at that little bit of hair. Danny's got some hair on top. I mean, Richard Shaw did grab that to help slam Dollar to the mat. There you go. Now Dollar grabbing that wrist, going for a nice wrist lock. He's got it. Just working that arm. Richard Shaw makes the tag to Bobby D. Bobby with the punch right to the shoulder. Nice tag team uh, expertise there. You gotta have to you have to work together if you're a tag team, and that's the that's the mystery. Anytime you have a, a first time team, you never know if they're gonna get along or not. Well, you know, and it's uh, the the fans really uh, benefit when you have a tag team main event on uh, All Star Wrestling like this this week. It just shows the caliber of, of wrestlers that we have here in SICW. Oh, nice arm drag by Bobby D. Something he does quite well there. Yeah. 
But, uh, you know, this is this is a, a main event in any auditorium, but right here are the fans at home. We're getting to watch it right here on TV. Look at that. Bobby made the tag, holding Shaw for his partner. Big elbow to the shoulder. Well done. There's Dollar whipping Shaw. Oh, nice reversal. Back elbow sends Dollar to the mat. Listen to the fans getting under Rick Ruby's skin. Richard Shaw staying on the offensive of Danny Dollar. That's exactly what you have to do. You can't let somebody with the experience, with the strength of Dollar, you can't let him regain his momentum. Here comes Rick Ruby, the 364 pound rough cut Rick Ruby. Big double clothesline to Danny Dollar. Both of these men just big, both uh, Shaw and Rick Ruby. Now, the thing about Rick Ruby is we saw him. He was the second-to-last man in the two-ring battle royal to crown our Central States title. I guess de facto, you you might – I don't know if this is official, but you could probably call Rick Ruby the number one contender oh, for the yes. Central States title. Well, you know, there was 21 uh, wrestlers in that two-ring battle royal, and they come down between him and the night train Gary Jackson, and – Gary Jackson had all he could do to come victorious. Oh, a two count. You know, the other thing, Drew, I wanted to mention, I got some calls the last couple of weeks from fans and some text messages wanting to know how to be part of the TV studio audience here. And uh, it's real simple. You uh, uh, come to the show uh, each month at the East Crown Lake Community Center. Yes, sir. And that night you get a ticket, a free ticket, allows you to come and be part of the TV studio. And your next opportunity for that, fans, will be December the 11th in East Carondelet with the TV tapings the following day, Sunday the 12th. Just the way they used to do it back in the day and wrestling at the chase. Oh, a nice Irish whip. Bobby D off. Oh, big clothesline by Richard Shaw. You know, Richard Shaw and Rick Ruby kind of have – Something in common in that both of them, when they first got here, had a little trouble getting off onto the right foot, but now they're establishing themselves. They're gaining confidence. They're gaining experience. Rick Ruby, Richard Shaw, we're seeing the kind of a rejuvenated version of both of these guys. And now they're working good together. They're jamming. I mean, you can see the referee being distracted and Rick Ruby working on Bobby D. Look at that. Danny Dollar was just chomping at the bit to get in there. Bobby stuck between a rock and a hard place. He needs to fight and do everything he can to get out of that corner. Well, Richard Shaw kind of helped him. Well, you know, Bobby D is no slouch. We've seen him in some great matches against the superstar Steve Fender and they teamed up here with Danny Dollar. And whoa, a nice running clothesline yeah. by Bobby D. Bobby D is another guy who stepped up his game. Oh, wait a minute. oh there's Kowalski. He just grabbed Danny Dollar. Oh, ring the bell. Nick now are calling for the bell due to the outside interference from Kowalski. And now it's all happening. Oh, wait a minute. Kowalski, he, we saw earlier Kowalski avoided the challenge from Dan Danny Dollar. Shaw and Ruby have B Bobby D trapped in one corner. Kowalski working on Dollar in the other. Here's Dollar. Wait a minute. Oh, he's going, oh, oh, no. He had Kowalski oh. up. He had both feet off the ground. Rick Ruby shoving Kowalski in the back. Uh oh He look at had that. him up. Look at that. Now, you know, Drew, when you talk about where's the beef at, it's right <laughs> here at the All-Star Wrestling <laughs> Studio today. Absolutely right. Kowalski, rough look cut Rick Ruby, Richard Shaw. That's about 1,000 pounds of men right there. Oh, and they've left their opponents lying. Danny Dollar had the entirety of Kowalski crash down on him. Bobby D was double teamed by Rick Ruby and Richard Shaw. You see them, they're a little worse for wear, but due to the outside interference from Kowalski, Bobby D and Danny Dollar are victorious. They've won this match because of the outside interference causing the disqualification. I know they don't look like the winners, but Today, they are, in fact, your winners via DQ, Bobby D and Danny Dollar. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today's SICW All-Star Wrestling. We saw newcomer Frank O. Varga looking extremely impressive over our very own, the very popular Billy McNeil. Kowalski. What do we say about Kowalski? He's he big. Was, he's, he is big. He was victorious in two body slam challenges and a handicap match today. And we saw him interfere in the main event, attacking Danny Dollar, causing Bobby D and Danny Dollar to be victorious due to disqualification. But we saw then Danny Dollar, he was this close to having Kowalski all the way up. Rick Ruby with a little bit of shove crashed right down on him. May have injured Danny Dollar's ribs. We'll have to see how this plays out. Well, I mean, he had him up, and I think he could have body slammed him. But Rick Ruby helping out Kowalski. Yep. Saved him. You bet. Fans, we're three days away, as we've said, December 1st. Attila Khan challenging for the NWA heavyweight title. That's going to be amazing. We hope to see you there. Herb, what an episode. Episode, once in the, it's in the can. You bet. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. For Herb Simmons, I'm Drew Abenhouse. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week.